They had to investigate quickly before the election was held, so we think that this is because of that. They, the FBI instead of the sheriff is investigating because there were 140 of them. I believe we submitted wonderful evidence to show that people were not actually living here, but they were registered to vote here. And, um, oh my God, this is the best day ever. <laughs> it just is. It's a wonderful, wonderful day. So that's why we believe they're here. But what have you seen uh, so far this morning as you've been... Uh... Not too much. I saw them down on the, uh, the FBI coming to the house on 17K. Um, Lots of men in FBI sweatshirts, lots of cars, and that was pretty much, you know, what I saw. I haven't seen anything really in the village, but I understand I got here a little late. Does, does this kind of renew your faith it, in the, um, it, hang on, I'm trying to get my microphone working right here. Does, do. does this renew your, your, your faith in the fight that you guys have it, ab it absolutely does, because every day you wake up and it can be a different day. This day, things are looking really good. This day, we may as well quit, and this just, this just did it. This is absolutely what we needed. Just, I'm gonna cry in a minute. <laughs> this is wonderful. This is wonderful. I, I'm almost speechless. It wouldn't seem like it, but I'm just. It's a wonderful day here. Was well, this could, something you ever th thought would have actually happened? That the FBI would have come no, to it? No, never. We never. We have been contacting offices, offices. Aileen Gunther, the Attorney General. Everybody turned a blind eye, with regardless of what evidence we had to show them. Nobody wanted to touch this, and um, and and the FBI is here in Bloomingburg today, <laughs> so it's a good day. But no, we never, never expected this. We expect the sheriff's office to do an investigation, because that's what the Board of Elections said they'd be doing. And um, no, we didn't expect this. <laughs> now. We felt that we needed to take to the streets and protest in front of the, the DA's office and explain to him that we need something to be done because our rights are being trampled on. Leslie Weinstein was one of dozens of protesters at the Selvin County Courthouse on Tuesday. They're calling on District Attorney James Farrell to look into alleged voter fraud in Bloomingburg. We're extremely concerned that the people who do not live in our town or village are casting votes in local elections. No one should be able to stuff the ballot boxes of America in 2015. They say the DA has not done enough to investigate. For all intents and purposes, nothing has been done yet. We need help, and we don't know why nobody is helping. In January, the County Board of Elections provided 184 notices to register voters with the intent to cancel their voter registration. 160 of those notices went to Hasidic Jews, who in turn filed a lawsuit against the Board of Elections earlier this month, citing religious discrimination. We respect the Sullivan County Board of Elections for its commitment to ensure that all those who are, that are eligible to vote in Bloomingburg can vote. Some of the conflict in this case comes from the group Royal Community Coalition's fight against the building of a 396-home Hasidic housing development in the village. But protesters say anti-Semitism has nothing to do with this alleged matter. We will do everything we can to uphold the integrity of the democratic voting system and to ensure that the Bloomingburg Village residents are not disenfranchised. For everybody to follow the law. We need to follow the law. Why should the law apply to only some people and not to everybody? Now, I did reach out to the DA's office for a comment, and so far, those messages have not yet been returned. It was a start to something that uh, I think everyone in the village and the neighboring community has been waiting for. For years, many in the village of Bloomingburg and the surrounding areas have been calling for an investigation into alleged voter fraud. Thursday morning, a federal indictment was handed up charging developer Shalom Lam, along with real estate developer Kenneth Nightaminen and business associate Valvi Smolowitz with conspiracy to corrupt the electoral process. I was taken back. I was pretty sad because I really kind of, I wanted to believe in the man. I wanted to believe that he came here to do better for this community and I don't think he did at all. According to a 14-page indictment, the three are accused of registering people to vote in a 2014 Bloomingburg election who did not actually live there. Federal prosecutors say it was all in order to elect people who favored Lam's Chestnut Ridge development. Among other things, the indictment says the three paid people to find false voters. They're even accused of putting toothbrushes and toothpaste in vacant homes to make it look like they were occupied. As you look at all the evidence and add it all up, no, it's not a surprise. 
In a statement, U.S. Attorney Preet Bharara said, quote, Profit-driven corruption of democracy cannot be allowed to stand no matter who does it or where it happens. As part of the case, former Mammocating Town Supervisor Harold Baird pleaded guilty to conspiracy to submit false voter registration. He admitted his goal was to run for office and vote in Bloomingburg in 2014, even though he didn't live there. Lam denies the charges against him. A statement from his attorney said, quote, Shalom Lam has been aware of this investigation for almost three years and is eager to defend himself against this unfounded charge. We intend to fight the charge vigorously at trial. It took a very long time and, you know, it's about time that it's starting to come to justice. If convicted, each of the three defendants face up to five years in prison and a $250,000 fine. Chestnut Ridge developer Shalom Lam pleads guilty to election fraud for trying to impact the Bloomingburg election in 2014. This is in connection with a case involving the Chestnut Ridge housing project in Bloomingburg, which received a local opposition the year before halting construction. I mean, that's good news as far as I'm concerned. The U.S. District Attorney says Lam, along with fellow developer Kenneth Notch Dimon and business associate Volvi Smilowitz, falsely registered and bribed voters who would elect public officials who were in favor of of the housing project. Officials say Lamb registered people to vote in Bloomingburg who were not residents of the area. A lot of talk about voter fraud because he kind of tried to back the, pack the <laughs> ballot box and uh, of course that's not good. Officials say Lamb also tried to cover up the fraud by creating and backdating false leases and placing items like toothbrushes and toothpaste in unoccupied apartments to make it seem as if the falsely registered voters lived there. Last month, Notch Dimon also pleaded guilty in the case. Lamb faces up to five years in prison when he's sentenced in September. This whole notion of election uh, or, or voting fraud, this, this is something that has constantly been disproved. This, this, this is fake news.